They got them for removals that occurred within the years of 2012 and 2013. Just removals. You know what they charged them with? Conspiracy to commit murder in the act of racketeering. In other words, conspiracy to commit murder based upon the fact that you're benefiting a criminal enterprise or organization. And so what they're trying to claim with this is that basically by them having some northerners hit, stabbed or whatnot or removed, that that was an act of trying to take them out, an act of murder. Okay? And that it was conspiracy. Regardless if these dudes just got hit real quick, stabbed, sliced up, they're going to still constitute that as an attempted murder charge. And so basically what they have was basically three removals. Now, he'd already took a deal on some uh, other indictment charge, man, but this racketeering act is just another way to just kind of pretty much put them in a position that they even have a bigger case. And it kind of helped out with all the other uh, sub people that were under this case. And so Chente basically got it for ordering the removals and uh, Jorge basically got it, or George, basically for participation. Now, they also got them for uh, controlled substances that were moved within the facility. So this is all typical, man. Uh, you know, just think about how things were going years ago. The things that they're indicting people over nowadays, man, shit, I would be indicted right now for calling removals or, or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Um, partaking in them. So the feds, the state, Department of Justice, both federal and, and state, they've all come into like basically a plan of, of pretty much circumventing any of these organizations from advancing. And so what you have here is a prime example, man, is that he's already doing life here. He got found guilty in a whole different trial before, and now he has a new case. And that they're just trying to basically build what you call president within the case to where this could be used in future indictments. Santa Clara County Jail, they had the same thing where people were getting caught with rosters and filters. They were using that as a conspiracy as far as within the racketeering act. You know what I'm saying? So that's why things, man, are really delicate right now. So he's probably going to get another life sentence. He's probably never going to see the streets. Uh, a lot of individuals kind of fell off during this case. Um, you know, they both took it to the box and were found guilty. Um, we're going to see where everything goes in from here. Um, you know, he's already been moved on twice in the Gondal in Santa Rita jail, man. And a lot of that stems from different issues, both state and feds and other, other alleged allegations. I'm not even going to go into that, man. Um, but he's found guilty. Um, and he's probably going to get, like I said, probably like 300, 400 years. That's how the feds do it, man. Knowing damn well he's never going to see the daylight again. And he's been in custody, man, basically on this case for about, what, seven years now? Eight years? That's a long time, man, to be awaiting uh, um, any type of uh, decision to get moved, to get your life moved on, man. Because regardless of how much time you're, you're given, you want to get to a facility where you start doing time. Eight years in the hole in Santa Rita jail is a long damn time, man. And they do not feed you good there, man. So, anyways, this is groundbreaking news. Vicente Chente Garcia, a um, well-known familiano, NF member, uh, been one since the 90s, was basically found guilty. And they you this case is kind of like I'm saying, man, the stuff that they're getting people on, you know, I get it, but they're kind of what you call a, a they're pushing the issue. You know what I'm saying? They're they're basically have having charges that really don't hold no merit. But when you have a jury in front of you, they don't know this, man. They only go with what's what they're seeing on paper and then what they the district attorney is going to describe as far as in their, you know, their nowadays their PowerPoints and so forth for the jury instructions. And they're probably like, oh my God, the NF, they're killing people. They're trying to kill them. Most of the time removals, you know, in a county jail, most of the time they're just to remove the victim. You know what I'm saying? Get them off the lines, make an example to where they're not going to walk the line no more. Unless there's some serious grave violations, then maybe you're going to try to take, take their win. But other than that, you know what I'm saying? Even the even IGI and even all these these uh, uh, investigators, they all know that man. They know that most of the removals nowadays, yes, they're using weapons. It's just to get, set an example and get them off the line. You hit the dude real quick, and you have some bombers get up, get off on them, and that's that. Now, if it's a priority target, someone that really needed an example to be set, that's a whole different story. You know what I mean? <laughs> and most of the time, you're going to put an SKP team on that because the SKP team, like I said before, they're not afraid to get caught. Their whole, their whole intention is to not stop what they're doing until they catch that life sentence. So, um, you know, it's kind of a, a fucked up situation as far as in reading these cases and knowing how much, you know, the media, the district attorneys, law enforcement, how much they kind of spin the narrative and they kind of embellish these stories, you know what I'm saying, about some of these organizational figures, you know what I'm saying? 
Not to say Chente was any saint by, by, by no means, you know what I mean? We already know he was actively out there in the mix. But in any event though, you know, the step that they start to use is the cat and mouse game, you know what I mean? You know, and they're always gonna win. They're always gonna have the upper hand, you know what I'm saying? The oppress is always gonna be able to oppress people as, as they see fit. And this is a prime example, you know what I'm saying? Dirty tactics. You know, and the feds are going to do everything they can to make make it stick. And that's what they did with this case. So Chente, man, Garcia, everybody's been waiting to hear what was going to happen to him, man. He finally got went to trial, and both him and, and that dude, Jorge, George, whatever they call him, have both been found guilty. So apparently now we're going to have to wait for sentencing to find out what happens. But, man, he's been in the county jail for a minute. You know what I'm saying? So this was a long time coming. The trial was done. You know, it just broke the news about two hours ago, man. So that's why I'm putting out this story real briefly, real quick, man, to give you guys, you know what I'm saying, some fresh content and let you guys know what's going on with Chente. Anyways, it's your boy Flacco, Comedy's Perspective, Real Talk with Flacco, whatever channel may be, man, I'm going to push this hard line. Get in on that raffle, man. I had Fig on earlier explaining about his book. There's a lot of stuff in this book that you would not see if you bought the published edition. It's going to have a special note as well as his John Hancock. Help support the brother, man. This, we're putting this raffle together to get, give two two books out are going to be given in this raffle. So you've got chances of winning two times, man. Anyways, I'm gone. Have a good night.